and welcome to tonight's episode of the Group Therapy Podcast. Tonight we have uh, who I, I believe is is one of my favorite comic book artists, and and I, I want to one day grow up to be Joe. Uh, Joe Vigil, <laughs> he is, uh, I, it's funny because I always joked around about that because um, uh, I know I was like, yes, here, here. I, I'm, I'm starting to see the, the balding happening here. Oh, yeah, okay. yeah. I uh, I hit the gym and you know I've I've been a fan of your work forever and um, I just you're you're on my uh, you're my top one of my top indie guys that I've liked your stuff since I was like I like I told you a little bit ago I was like since before I was really too old to be reading it <laughs> that's when <laughs> I started getting into it so um, I want to introduce Joe Vigil. Hello, how are you doing? So, ah, but um, Joe, um, when did you get started um, working? I mean, you've you've been, I mean, since I was I was a kid, so probably I remember getting your stuff in probably like eighty nine, ninety. That's about right. I did. I think I did the first, like I did that uh, backstory for Faust. I did uh, Fritz Whistle. Yeah. And uh, uh, that was 87. And I think we did Dog in 89, something like that. But the Gunfighters wasn't until uh, 1990 or 91. I did the short story in the Raw Media magazine yeah. that Tim put out. It was like the anthology book. That was the first time Gunfighters was ever done. And then we started the book. So, yeah, about 91 then. So I've been doing it for a while. Oh, yeah. Well, what what's fun was was uh, you know I I've been like I said been a fan for years. Um, I didn't realize how much stuff you had put out because I mean like you said uh, one book you said was put out in Italy and and uh, oh yeah I did a lot of stuff in Italy. Yeah, it, Italy's is 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 big on their uh, <laughs> uh, erotic. You know, they're big on their titties. Yep. Yes, they are. <laughs> they are. But um. I came I, the right guy. I, oh yeah. No, I was uh you know, I was probably like I said, I was maybe about 15 when I discovered um your work uh with your brother and yeah. Um it's like I said, kind of just snowballed from there and um I'm always anytime I see like some of your stuff pop up, I'm 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 buying it. Um I was digging through some stuff the other day and and found the uh sin bucks, the uh Gunfighters in, from Hell, um, the, the Raw Media Mags, stuff like that. Um, the only thing I, I, always, I was kind of disappointed in is I got a lot of stuff signed by your brother, and I got a lot of stuff signed by Dave. I don't think I have yeah. – I only have, like, two books signed by you. I don't so, go to conventions that much. Yeah, well, I think the, literally the ones I got signed by you, I ordered – Oh, oh, okay. and they shipped to me, signed by you. So, and that was uh, gunfighters because you're, yeah. you're, it's it's signed on the back. So you got your picture, and then underneath the picture you have signed. Oh. So, uh, oh, you got the Black Magic edition. Yeah, 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 yeah. We, me and Dave, were on the back of that one. Yep, yep. With the uh, good, the bad, and the ugly poster in the back. Oh yeah, yep. Yeah, I've got that double signed by you guys. I, I ordered it when I was working. Uh, I worked at a comic book store. I don't think I've, I've ordered, worked at a comic book store since I was 15. So um, I I would, anytime I'd see any of your guys' stuff, I would order it immediately. And uh, like I said, I, I dug through there and I was like, okay, so I think I have that one. And I think I have another issue of, I think a sin buck that I ordered. And that's the only other book I, ha I think I have. And it was signed? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. But I think I ordered it online but that was wow, that's uh weird. probably what 10 years ago maybe so but and and i i unfortunately i don't have any of that stuff here because it's all in my actual collection put away stored away so except for i have comic boxes and a cat fighting around in the background so <laughs> <laughs> yeah. hold on a second hold on all right you. did you ever get the collected the collected this one uh 
I don't think so. Yeah, this is the color cover. This 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 one was this thing you can't get a hold of anymore. I got lucky and got a hold of a couple. But yeah, this I don't know if you got that. No, I don't think I do. I'll have to double check because I'm in the process of putting all my stuff into the computer and and so I actually have so I actually know exactly what I have. So yeah. And, and yeah, this has everything of the original gunfighters, even the short stories and stuff. But yeah, that was a that was broken halo put that together. Okay, then I might have um, that because I, I bought all that stuff through broken halo you guys were putting out. So yeah, you should look and see if you got that. Because cool. I got a couple. You got a couple. Do you, you ever um, you, uh yeah? Do you ever go through and just realize that you don't have something that you did? That you just like either got rid of them or hell, or, I don't have nothing I've done. Nothing? I don't keep anything I do. I all my all the artwork for them are pretty much gone. The books are always gone. I used to have we did a a bar set of glasses uh of gunfighter stuff and mm -hmm. I don't have any of those. I'm an idiot. I don't keep nothing. Oh man. See, my I, original art, I don't want it around here because I don't want to look at it. So I always sell it out. You, okay. I, I've got a couple of other, other artist friends and they they hate looking at their old their art because they never feel like it it's it's done or they always think they can do better now. Is that well you, I'll look at it and I'll spot places where I fucked up and I'm like, God damn it. And then, then I don't want to look at it. Here you go. You want to buy it? Take it. Buy it. Take it. I, 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 that's, that's kind of funny. Now, man. Tim, Tim keeps all his stuff. He's got shit all over the place. <laughs> well, th that, that's every time I look, I always see like Tim will always post stuff of like work he's doing. It's like, okay, this is just the pencils. I'll sell it for this much. Then he'll have it inked. Then he goes, oh, it's this much. Then he colors it. It's this much. Oh, It'll yeah, be, yeah, yeah. He'll do yeah. that. Yeah, p part of me, I, I keep looking at that. I was like, I really want one of those. And then I'm like, oh, I can't afford it now. <laughs> I should have bought it two stages ago. <laughs> this is my uh, my my joke yeah. room. Yeah, I can see your stuff back there. Yeah, that's, that's the junk room back there. The uh, <laughs> and, and this is the basement to my house. This is my 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 room, I guess. Um, it's where I film everything and do all my fun shit. So, sit over here and on my couch and read comics and watch watch horror movies or watch uh um. Although I've been on a kick lately, I've been watching old uh, spaghetti westerns. So there you I want to do that because I used to love spaghetti westerns, but there were only a couple directors that I actually liked. I thought most of them sucked, but I want to rewatch them again because I didn't used to like Death Rides a Horse. And now I really like that movie. Um, Day of Anger. There was a bunch of when me and Tim were real tiny, we'd go to the base theater. OK, my mom, my mom worked at uh, McClellan, the Air Force Base, and we could get in there for like. 25 cents or something we watch shit every day so just she'd get us out of her hair and uh, yeah i saw tons of uh uh spaghetti westerns in there yeah see i i just was going back when i like watch, this watching the old uh franco nero stuff and uh um i wanted to go back and rewatch uh, uh day of anger because i was sitting there i was like watch i was looking at yeah. i was like oh i forgot this movie I was like, now I gotta watch this. The um, I just yeah, that's I watched Day of Anger on Tubi. I think it was on. Yeah, Tubi. that's that's where I found just it. A, I was about that two months ago. Yep, I probably that's what I probably watch when I'm getting done doing this before I go to bed. But it, it's it's funny because um, I, I got these kids that come in my shop, and we were talking about westerns and stuff a couple of days ago. And I go, you know, they're sort of going, oh, you know, Tombstone's the best, or, you know, we were doing this and stuff. And I go, have you ever watched any of these? And they're like, which ones? I was like, have you, have you never seen the original Django? Have you never seen, you know, well, um, oh, yeah, Sabata. 
Have yeah. you ever seen? Yeah, Django. Fuck, man. Come on. Get with it. Oh, yeah. Well, one kid had to come back in. He looked at me. He's like, because I told him, I was like, watch the original Django. And he's like, the the I was like, no, not the Quentin Tarantino. That's that's loosely, that's not even loosely based on a Django movie. That's based on a completely different movie. Yeah. And um, then I had a, a, a friend of mine who watched that movie for the first time. The movie that that uh, um, the Django, uh, the Django Unchained. He they watched the movie that yeah. the, the the Ballad of uh, uh, Charlie there. <laughs> And she's like, uh, that, oh, okay. <laughs> like, yeah, that's a completely different time. They were allowed to do that back then. <laughs> but no, no, um, you watch, watch, watch Jang. Uh, what is the one called? Django shoot something kill. The one that's supposed to be the most violent uh, uh, Italian Western ever made where they actually shoot gold bullets in that dude and the guy and the people in the town rip his body open to get, to the, to bullets. get the bullets out. Yep. That oh, was man. wild. Oh yeah. Um, I, uh, like I said, I just, I picked up, uh, was it arrow or some, uh, some DVD uh, Blu-ray company was lit, was doing uh, cheap Blu-ray. So I picked up a bunch of the Franco Nero stuff that was, in America, it was a Django movie, but over in um, Europe and over in Italy, it wasn't because th he's not even Django in those movies. But since it was Franco Nero in a Western, in America, it was a Django movie. So I picked up several of those. So was the, that that was on Arrow? Uh, man. I thought Kino was doing that. Hold, hold uh, on a second. Uh, I can think I'll tell you really quick. All right. Okay. Um, one was um, Blue Underground. That's uh, Man Pride Vengeance. Okay, yeah, I know they. And uh, have you watch that? Yeah, that one's. That's one of the ones that they that that in America it was called Django Comes Death, but it wasn't. It wasn't even a Django movie. So it's not bad. Oh no, ninety nine percent of the movies that are called Django aren't Django movies. I think they only made two or three actual Django movies. Well, the, the, yeah, because they made two, and then he made one way later. So there's actually three, but literally there's like almost a thirty year gap between the second and the third one. And then this yeah. one, this one is um, Django the Bastard. Yeah, I've never seen that. I've heard of that, but I've never seen that. Yeah, that one is, uh, uh, yeah, it's uh, an intriguing spaghetti western with gothic horror elements. <laughs> that actually sounds like the one we were just talking about with the gold bullets. Yeah, the, this is from Synapse Films. But yeah, I get, I get those whenever I can, because sometimes I can get them dirt cheap. So, oh, man. Oh yeah, Kino was having a sale. I think they were like five, six bucks a pop just recently. I ordered a bunch of stuff, but yeah, you could get all sorts of stuff off there cheap. Oh yeah. Mm. The other one was um, I went on a I went on a samurai move uh, samurai movie ninja movie kick and I uh, bought a bunch of movies from Arrow because <laughs> they had them from uh, down almost. Um, like five six bucks a piece on blu-ray so what the hell good ninja movie for six bucks whatever ouch that's a yeah hell yeah you can actually if it stinks i only paid six bucks I'll, i can get that back oh yeah especially on arrow movies and stuff like that they're they're you know when they're you go to the store if you can go to a, a boutique store they're still like 30 bucks so hell even if you turn them back in there you can get six bucks for them probably so. yeah Oh yeah, that's what I like about that. Uh, what was it you just mentioned, Arrow? I just what the hell did I just get from them? And I can't remember now, but I'm looking at my movies over there. It's too bad I'm blind because <laughs> I I tell you what I got. But okay, <laughs> but my movies are way over there. I uh, yeah, mine are that away. My, my last Arrow movie I got, I think, was uh, the European box set of the house movies oh yeah okay 
Yeah, because here in America, we got house one, two, and four. And number three was the horror show. But everywhere else, it was house three, the horror show. Oh, okay. So, yeah. Yeah. I, I ended up splurging a while back because my wife told me, go ahead. So I bought a region free Blu ray player. Sorry. See, I haven't done that yet. My son got one. Everybody else I know has got one. I still haven't done that. That's my next thing. Yeah, I, I love it because there's box sets that here in America are a hundred bucks, you know, or even a DVD or Blu-ray. It's a hundred bucks. You can get the uh, European release of the exact same movie for like 20 bucks. There's no difference. Yeah. Besides the fact that it's American was- release versus European release. So. I was looking on the British Amazon and you could get all sorts of shit that we don't get oh, yeah. off there. And they, I mean, not cheap, cheap, but relatively because you're, I don't know how much shipping is from there right now, but it was, it still came out pretty good and it was stuff you can't get. Yeah. Well, I picked up some stuff a while back and literally shipping was like four bucks. Because it's DVDs. Oh, yeah. You know, I'm like, hell yeah, I'm going to buy a copy of of uh, one I picked up was Razorback. Do you remember that movie? The giant killer pig movie? Yeah. 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 That's, not a, that's not available in the United States on Blu-ray. So I picked oh, up. Oh, really? Yeah, I picked up the, Euro, the European release of that. And it's great. It's really high quality. And then it's $26. I think it's what it cost me altogether. So <laughs> that's you can't beat that. No. And and it's funny because I've I've never understood why that movie is not available in the United States. It's can you is it available on regular DVD? I don't even think it's available on regular DVD. I the the old I've got a I have a VHS of it. <laughs> and I, I don't know. <laughs> pardon me. Um I thought my son got razor back on dvd it, it, but i could be wrong uh i swear he said he got it on dvd though yeah I, i'm not 100 percent. don't quote me on that but i know that it's 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 one of these movies it's just it's it's uh, i don't know if it's just so obscure that it it doesn't warrant a release or whatever but i had to get the european one to get the the to get it on blu-ray so maybe those music rights that's usually what screws everything up oh yeah music rights is insane that's that's why there's a a few movies that will probably never get released is the the movie rights are are tangled up horribly bad oh yeah they're all over the place you can't even you can't that was what happened to uh uh, dr fives uh they had um over the rainbow at the end when he escaped Mm-hmm. But they couldn't get the uh, uh, rights mm-hmm. to it for a long time. They finally did. It's it is now on the, the DVD, but uh, or the Blu-ray. But uh, yeah, that that music rights are insane. Oh yeah, it, it, it's it's funny because then um, we we always joke around that the number one uh, thing that screwed up music rights was uh, WKRP in Cincinnati, the TV series, oh. <laughs> because you know they yeah. used they used music in every episode. So I remember it on VHS tape back in the day, and it just had generic filler music. And then when they finally released yeah, it on, they, on, on DVD, it still has generic filler music, but it does have some of the original music that they were able to get the rights to. But, you know, what are you doing, dog? <laughs> yeah, I was watching a thing on YouTube. They were talking about which uh, TV series aren't you can't get on a DVD, at least here because of music rights and it was like saint elsewhere there was there's a bunch of them i think, oh, I think they finally figured out buffy yeah werewolf there the was TV they, series oh yeah yeah that was it too yep that was one of them what yep. the fuck is happening i just lost you okay I, you're still there on me what in okay well, yeah well uh, hold on a second. Where did that go? Weird. You're you're still on here on my end. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. I just can't see you. Okay. 
That's weird. Yeah, weird. It just clicked off. Uh, uh, hold on a second. Let me see what I'm, what's going on. Oh, there you are. There we go. Okay. All right. Oh, but before I ask, before I, before I forget to ask here, I have to, um, I always ask all my friends, who was it? Was it because it's almost always Jack Kirby. Is it Jack Kirby that got you started loving comics? Yeah. Yeah. This is, it's far, always, too. Yeah. It's always Jack Kirby. But we were, <laughs> we were collecting comics, you know, back in the early 60s. When yeah. I was like four or five. And uh, me and Tim would go to this uh, pharmacy and they had the comic rack. Mm -hmm. And we would wait every Friday, or was it Friday or Monday when they'd bring them, whatever the day was, we'd have our own wire cutters. And they would come down and, and drop up the cocks and we'd cut the wire, get the ones we wanted, but because that we weren't supposed to do that, we would put the comics in the racks for them. And then they wouldn't give us any shit. So we, would, we got our comics real quick and got everything. That's cool. Yeah. I I, I grew it up. It was it's Kirby. It was Kirby, and then later, what? Go ahead. Oh, yeah. I, I similar to that. I literally would go when I was a kid. My mom worked at a grocery store, and said so my grandmother, and I would sit there and wait for them at work because they they I, my grandmother would watch me while my mom was at work, and then my mom would pick me up. But I'd always there was always that little overlap, and I would sit on the new on this little bench. And they would have the new comics, and I would sit there and read the comics and snag them all when I wanted. <laughs> I just thought that was fun, but oh yeah, oh yeah, we get we got everything. And I think um, when uh, Creepy and Eerie came out, they had the Frazetta covers. And when I I saw Frazetta, I said that's the greatest fucking artist ever. And I mean, I'm a little kid, and I just went, great. That's a, I'm never going to see anything better than that. And I have. Frazetta was the next biggest influence on me, that's at nice. least when I was collecting. Oh, that's cool. Well, but yeah, it, Frazetta was one of the ones that that um, he Frazetta introduced me to Conan when I was a kid. Like you know, I read the, the Marvel comics and stuff like that, but like the actual Marvel oh, yeah. novels. I'm, I was at the bookstore buying some comics, and I looked over, and there's the Frazetta cover to I think Conan the Adventurer. And I was like, oh, I need that. And, you know, I think my little night, like my, like, you know, when I should have been reading kids books, I think that's when I discovered Conan at like, I don't know, like nine, 10 years old. And yeah. then it was over, over from there. Then I started having to have, read all that fantasy stuff. Well, yeah. Cause uh, what Conan came out in 82, I believe. So I was, oh, geez, I was way young. Um, so yeah, you must have got you must have got the reprints because those things were out in the '60s. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it's well, it's used bookstore. So I I couldn't tell you. Yeah. That. Oh yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, because there was a little used bookstore. There were only two cover artists back then that really that that yeah, Frazetta was one that stuck out to me, and um, oh, man. Um, Bama was big for me. Doc Savage covers. Oh yeah, that oh, guy yeah. was an amazing fucking artist. Well, what's funny is is that um, I pick up every time I can get a chance to. Like if I go to like a flea market or garage sale or something like that, I jump on those old Doc Savage, the 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 Shadow. I I jump on all those books, and I still read those to this day. And it, it's funny because some of my I, I had when I was a kid. And I'll reread them now as an adult. And I'm like, oh, oh, now I remember this one. This is where the one where, oh, yep, yep. <laughs> oh, yeah. Almost 30. I'll always read, I'll reread all the Conans, reread all the Doc Savages. There, what was the, Steranko did a cover, a sword and sorcery cover with this guy riding a horse. That was an amazing cover. Uh, I can't remember. I think uh, Dick Camp wrote it. Uh, I can't remember the name of that, but that was another cover that was that stuck with me. Oh, well, what was really fun was um, 
when uh, they did the Frazetta comics, what about 10 years, more than 10 years ago now, uh, about 15 years ago now, right? The, the, the Frazetta comics that Image did, Tim did one of the books. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, a friend of mine uh, did the art on the Sorcerer book, uh, a, a kid named Josh Metters. Um, he did one of them, and and I have, oh, man, that all those covers, and then it gave the story. You know, I I, I, I like that. That was that was something cool for me, so. The, um, yeah. <laughs> It's 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 one of the ones where where I, I go back and I, I look at some of these books that I go okay this is literally the reason I bought this it was you know my little kid brain was like oh that look at that cover you know and then next thing you know it's it's like yes that's that's it and you know that's 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 what I want for the rest of my life. <laughs> oh yeah, I was uh. I'd see Wally Wood covers on the uh, old Creepies and Eeries. I, uh, or not Creepy and Eerie. What did he do? He did the 50s. Um, uh, I've got, I've got, I, can't, I can't remember what the name of that. It was, I think it was a science fiction book. But uh, yeah, yeah, I, I got them around here somewhere. But yeah, you'd get the Wally Wood covers. Uh, Frazetta, of course. Oh, yeah. That's, it's, it was uh, incredible. So there was one that that uh, Frazetta drew and Wally Wood inked it. That was pretty fucking amazing. Uh, yeah, that was, that was good stuff, man. I don't even, I don't look at co comics too much anymore. I don't like the coloring in them. See, I, I've got, I, um, I'm a big fan of the uh, Marvel magazines, the black and white stuff. Right. I, I like, yeah, and, and a lot of people don't dig it because you know they're like, oh, I, I like color, and I'm like, there's something about black and white, especially especially in horror comics. I think is it 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 fits better. Does that make sense? The the the. Yeah, I agree. Creepy, the creepies and eeries, they were black and white, and they were scary actually because yeah. of that. Yeah. And, uh, but I'm talking about color back then was done with those sheets and you'd cut out the color and stuff. And I did a couple of those. That was, that was a pain in the ass. But I don't like computer coloring because it looks like a video game. Everybody's got to look the same. And I think that's why I don't look at comics much anymore, because every artist has to look the same. And that started with image and those guys. Everybody wanted to draw like Jim Lee. Everybody wanted to draw like uh, McFarlane and them. You know, back even in the 70s and 80s, you had individual styles. You don't have that anymore unless you go outside the uh, the realm of uh, uh, DC, Marvel, those guys. Yeah. I mean, sure, independence, yeah, you got, you got individual styles, but they aren't selling much anymore. Well, right now, I, I read a lot of comics. I'm, I'm not going to lie. I, I've still, I read way, I read a ton, but it right now. Good. But right now, the stuff that I really, really like is the independent horror stuff. It's it's stuff from uh, companies like Black Mask and Scout and stuff like that. These guys, the uh, low print runs. It, it's and it's it's. I don't, I don't even know if I have one <coughs> sitting right here, but it's. I, I don't know. I, I like the coloring. They 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 either. Um, they're very different from the from the norm. Very very different from the norm. What were the companies? Uh, Black Mask. Um, they do. Uh, give me one second. I can. All right. Let's see. I just grabbed some books real quick, so some of this might not be what I want. All right. But this this is um, this is uh, Scout Comics. They do. What well, is bad? Because this is their. Uh, it's a black and green cover, and there yeah. is the regular cover, which has the red and black. Um, that, let's see. Um, uh, bah, bah. Uh, and then there's some that's not really. They got uh, good there. writing in them? Um, yeah, I. those are pretty good. This one's steak. 
Uh, that's from uh, Scout Comics. It's I, it's not quite black and white. If you can see some of the, it's like that. It does have like color down here. Oh, but it, yeah. Uh, that's from, right. that's a. Um, in the in the future, there's there's uh, vampires that exist within humans, and they have to have their own police force to, uh, um kind of take care of them um this one i really like but this one's through image it's called homesick pilots okay i haven't heard of that um let's see if i can find yeah i mean here's here's some of the artwork let's see there oh okay yeah. yeah that's that's the stuff i'm really liking and then oh oh black caravan they do one uh gods of brutality that's just yeah. funny that's not even horror. That's a, uh, um, um, literally a uh, uh, heavy metal singer ends up in hell, and he uh, calls to like basically all the gods to try to help him get out of it. And the only two gods that answer him are uh, Hercules and Thor, so they come and get him out of hell. Um, yeah, there, there's, you know, of course I still get my ones. Um, oh, where to go? Where to go? Where to go? Um, horror comic Harrow County, and okay, I think I've seen that. Yeah, that's from um, Dark Horse. I mean, it's it's not. There's the artwork. Okay, it's not. It's very not the 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 norm. All right, that looks the and that's that's what I really like. I mean, I continue. To keep reading the same stuff that i've been reading my pretty much my entire life um right you know i i went through x-men since i was a kid i went through all that stuff and i just keep reading it almost out of habit at this point you know out of 40 years of habit i guess so but yeah yeah but no i'm a, I, like i said i and then i still get um Whenever, you know, you, you or Tim puts out a book, I try to get it whenever I can. And and uh, I think it's kind of cool. I, um, I just read, what, about a week ago, Faust is getting an animated series? Maybe. They're, they the Sony picked up the, uh, the, the option. Uh, so they're waiting to find, find out what's going on. That's that, happening with, gun, uh, yeah, we're having, that's happening with gunfighters too. Sweet, is that going to be? Uh, yeah, we'll see. Yeah, I've talked to so many people who go, "Oh, yeah, my stuff got picked up for or optioned," and I'm like, "Is it coming out?" <laughs> I, I, I don't know, know, man. I I don't know how many times Gunfighters has been optioned. It's just a never, nothing's ever happened. I just said, "All right, give me the money, and then do whatever the fuck you want." And then when you don't do it, I'll get my rights back. That's a, that's how I feel now. You just you you're just like. I got four contracts, I think, in my closet. All of them, for a lot of money. All of them are worthless. That's sad. That 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 and and like like Warner Brothers and and like stuff like that level, or is it you know like Lionsgate and stuff. It was Vanguard Films was one. I think they picked up the option. They were trying to sell it to, I think. Who was the guy that did, who uh, produced Superman? Was that, not John Peters. Uh, I can't remember who the producer was, but he, they, they sent it to him and I was in contact with him for a while. Uh, Tom Jane tried to pick up the rights and he wanted to be star as the gunfighter but then he wanted to change the story around. And I said, no. Nope. And uh, uh, I, I mean, really, I don't care. You, you're not changing the story. There's certain parts of that story you can't change because it fucks the whole thing up. And he wanted to change. He want, didn't want the gunfighter to die. I said, well, you can, you're going to be in the sequels or whatever, the prequels. But the gunfighter's got to die because that's the main part of the book. Yeah. So, so I, he... he he never understood that. So, oh well. There's a couple others. That, that's oh man, that, that sucks. As as it's something I'd like to see, but 
I've I've only done uh, one treatment for one movie, and I got to the point where they're like, "We like it. Um, we're we're not going to option it because it's it's a, a, a what we consider a dead you know um, property." But I got I got the people who read it liked it. So, <laughs> Honra. Yeah. Um, do you remember the old Blind Dead? Really? Line? Yeah. Yeah. I I I uh, Dream I wrote... of the Blind Dead. Great movie. Yep, I uh, I wrote a uh, treatment for a updated sequel, and it would have been a direct sequel to um, the Galleon of the Dead, the one where right. the ships going across the ocean. It was yeah. a direct sequel to that, and it would have been the whatever thirty five years between point A and point B. And uh, I I wrote it. the 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 people who wrote it liked it, but I didn't get picked up. So I'm like, okay. <laughs> yeah, they're trying to get me to write a, a, a treatment for a dog. And I say, you get someone else to do it, man. I'm tired of doing that shit. I can't, I can't keep writing these things and nothing happens. You get someone else to do it. Not interested anymore. Uh, I want to put out a new dog book. That's what I want to do. I got artwork for it. I just got to finish off Simba. Cool. Is it, uh, that I'm almost next- done with Simba. Gun, the whole gunfighter series will be done then. Nice. That, then that, then that just, uh, do you have a timeline on that or you just, huh? you get timeline on that or just whenever you get to it? Hold on, you're breaking up. What did you okay. say? Oh, I said, uh, do you have a timeline on that when it's going to be released or do you, uh, or am I still breaking up on your end? Yeah, you're kind of breaking up, but here, I'll tell you, uh, I just finished episode, I just finished number nine, and I got 10, 11, 12 to do, and I, I, I'm about three pages into issue 10. This thing, the entire thing should be done by January, February. I should be done with everything then. Nice. You- yeah, it'd be nice, because that's 30 goddamn years of work. Oh, man. well, it's, it's, it's funny. Cause I had a friend and he was sitting there going, man, I wish this would, you know, I was like, that's, that's still continuing. And they're like, what? I was like, yeah, here's the book. I got it. And I, I don't know. Cause I, I don't know if he went back and ordered it or whatever, but he, he's like, I didn't know that was still going on. I'm like, yes, it's still going on. Just go look on the internet or go. <laughs> so yeah, it's not in stores. No, you got to come. No. You got come to me. Yep. <laughs> so I, I, uh, I, I, I think I even, I think I sent him to your Facebook page because I didn't know where else to get a hold of it. But I don't know if what he did after that. So I think he somebody. What was his name? Adam. Adam Brown. I think he ordered books. Okay. Yeah. Because there was a bunch of people that, for a little while that I had no clue who they were, but they knew. They had come to the uh, site, to the uh, Wix site, and asked me if they want, if I should, if they should order from there. I said, no, no, no. That Wix site is all screwed up. I don't know what's going on there. So just order from me. You can look at the books there, but then plus I give you a ten percent discount. You order from me. So hey, that was cool. There you go. There you go. But but uh, yeah, go ahead. Oh, well, what was funny? Um, I just moved not too long ago. Well, about a year ago now, and I was going through some of my old stuff from that I'd had. I found the Rebel Studios business card. Oh, the black one? Yeah, the black one with the with the the little Rebel uh, bloody Rebel logo in the yeah. corner. Yeah, yeah. I found that. I was All like, right. I was like, man, that's old. I bet you none of these phone numbers exist anymore. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah man i don't know how many business cards i have and it, every one of them has a different phone number oh shit yeah don't that would don't call that number no, no. you'll probably get the cops <laughs> uh but but it's funny that i still had i was like man i i probably got that in like pretty 90, cool. probably like 92 maybe yeah so yeah i, I had a bunch of those i don't know where they are but yeah those were i like those uh those cards yeah i think i got them at um I believe Motor City Con one year when uh, Tim and Dave were up there uh, pushing 
you know, Faust. I can't remember what issue it was back then. Are there any cons coming out that, but out there? I just went to one today. Um, oh, really? What yes, was it? It was Gem City Con. It's uh, in Dayton. Um, I went to that one. We have a couple of small ones, and then we have Cincinnati in September, I believe. Except for Cincinnati, I don't think I'm going to oh, do it because okay. it's literally the same day as two baseball games and an Oktoberfest. So there's going to be no parking <laughs> whatsoever at the convention center. Hey, dude, so. It's Oktoberfest. Why you you can't you can't compete against that? No, not in Cincinnati. So not and not during not during two uh, Cincinnati no. Reds baseball games. So yeah, Tim. What? Oh, I was like they, they had uh, it's two Cincinnati oh, Reds oh, games yeah. that day. So, but. Oh, that's going to be tough to compete against. Yeah. Well, it's not even that. It's the fact Tim that just went to a convention. Yeah, he, he went to the one in L.A. Him and my son went. I think they should be back home here or back here around one. But, yeah, he said it was pretty good, actually. The drummer of System of the Down uh, put the con on, and he said it was it was a pretty good con. There was a lot of people there and stuff. And that's cool. It'd be nice for the stuff to start to open up. Oh yeah, it's it's it was fun. I I got to do my do because today I just went to it just to buy and to talk to my friends and stuff because it was a two day show and I have a shop and it's hard for me to get away from my shop even for a day, um, but I do Sunday shows and it was nice because I did my first Sunday show um, relatively recently and it's it's you know I get to go back and see my my convention friends. And a lot of my customers that I don't see come in my shop because they just come to the shows down in Dayton. And it, it's, it's a blast again. You know, it's, it's, it almost feels like home again. I hate, you know, not quite, but almost there. You know what I mean? So. Yeah. Keep your fingers crossed. Yeah. Um, I know what I was going to ask you now, because you just talked about your son. How is that working with your son? I like working with Jeff, but, uh, we, He's a tattoo artist now, so we don't really do much uh, comic book stuff anymore. Yeah, I, that's funny because uh, one of my one of my really good friends he uh, he realized that his his comic book he's an exceptional artist and he he's really good, but he figured out recently that he makes a lot more money doing tattoos than he does making comics right now. So he's like, no, nah, comics are side yeah, project. That's what everybody keeps telling me. Yeah. So he's like, he's, he's like, man, I make great money tattooing. Yeah. He's just, he's setting up his own shop right now. Well, that's cool. So yeah, it's like, how much of those guys make an hour? I mean, it's fucking ridiculous. They, I, they're I, making lawyer prices. Oh yeah. I, I know um, my one buddy makes, um, and he's relatively new to this new, new area. So he can't charge because he just moved shops. So yeah, he's he makes like 150 bucks an hour, and that's yeah, that's what that's I, the low end, you know. I'm like, geez. and 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 well, uh, I, I think Jeff was charging 200 bucks an hour. Yeah, and 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 I know and people, he wanted to put a tattoo on. Pardon me. Oh, I know people that are making 300 bucks an hour too. So it's. You gotta you better be good though. Oh yeah. I see some of the some of the stuff they put on people. I was like, God damn, I'd kill someone who put that on me. Uh but yeah, some some of these guys are tremendous artists. Oh yeah. I uh it's not something I would do, but god damn, they're good. I, I I'd be so afraid because man, when I back when I'm I trying. Used to, Yeah, I got couple yeah <laughs> but and it's it, it's funny because i got people like does it hurt yeah what's your threshold of pain that's that's the other thing i gotta ask you <laughs> um but yeah that, that's that's cool it depends but, on where you put them i think oh yeah my my arms didn't hurt at all i matter of fact i fell asleep during both of them so 
Yeah, I would think that on the upper arm where it's pretty thick and down here, you probably don't have too much pain. But no. um, I've seen girls put them in places that I go, you're, you're insane. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. I, uh, well, well, like I said, having friends that are tattoo artists, they'll tell you, they're like, yeah, there's no way I would ever get, and there are people getting tattoos there. And I'm like, okay. Yeah, I have that. That's extra money. Yeah, because I'm not I, that. I don't want to hear you scream. Well, the worst part about it is it wasn't. I got one on my leg, and it wasn't the pain. It wasn't anything to do with the actual tattoo. I just happen to have dry skin, so my leg is always itchy. Oh, really? So yeah, I'm like sitting there going, "Oh, that was a horrible mistake." And I'm just scratching, and I scratch it at night while I'm not paying attention. I'll be asleep, and I'll just start scratching with my other foot. And I wake up and it'll be red and raw. And I'm like, oh, God dang it. Like, I've, I've, not, I've never finished it. I got the black outline and all that stuff. And it's not that it hurts. It's the fact is, is that I got dry skin on my legs. <laughs> That's the only stupid Isn't thing. That... But... Uh, he's been trying to talk me into doing one on my arm. And I was going to put, I don't know. What I, I was going to put my granddaughter's name on there or... Uh, Air Force uh, symbol because I was in the Air Force, but I don't know. I've never had a tattoo. I had to fight my way out of a tattoo shop when I was in the service because I wouldn't get one. And uh, I don't know. I might get Aurora's name on here. Yeah, I mean, and that's the the the, the thing. I, I'm I'm eventually going to get my kids' initials and like uh, like just something small that you can't really unless you know. It'll be like in a design. Right. That, that's my goal. I mean, because also I want to put my like my wife's initials and and something. And oh, uh, well, that's yeah, that's different. You're putting your family on there. See, that's what I'm. Yeah, that that I can see doing. Yeah, but I've got. I've I'm got not, not going to put some skull with a scorpion. <laughs> no. I, I, I'm horrible. My one of my favorite things of all time is I love Godzilla. I love Godzilla. Oh yeah, fuck yeah, man! I love I got, Godzilla. I got that. I got a Godzilla tattoo. Oh, whoa. That's pretty good, too. Yeah. I got, I got that. That's cool. That was my first one, too. And it's somebody goes, well, what are you going to do? I'm like, I've loved Godzilla since I can remember. So there's a good chance that I will love it until I die. So I don't care. What was your first Godzilla movie? Um, First one I saw in the theater was... Uh, um, uh, it was a repeat because our, our theater ran a Saturday afternoon where they would show older stuff. And I think, right. was, I think it was Mecha Godzilla or terror of Mecha Godzilla was the first one I saw. Oh, okay. Um, and then, like, like the first one I saw like at home um, was probably King Kong versus Godzilla. Um, and yeah, then, that was what the, that was the first one I saw in a theater. We yeah. saw that we saw King Kong versus Godzilla eleven times in one year. We, it, my mom went insane. You guys want to go to the movie? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah you guys want to go to the movie? And <laughs> King Kong versus Godzilla. Oh yeah. Well, when I was a kid, the guy who knew, that ran the theater because we had one uh, old school two screen theaters in the middle of town. Um, he knew me because my grandpa used to take me there. Right. And ever since I was a little kid, I mean, literally, um, I went and seen one of the re-releases of Swiss Family Robinson. And I cried at the end because I didn't want it, not that I was sad. I just didn't want it to end. Oh, and yeah. uh, my, my, the guy looked at my grandparents and said, any kid that loves movies so much that he cries because he doesn't want them to be over, I can't charge this kid. I didn't get charged till I was in high school. <laughs> hey, I like that school. guy. Yeah, maybe junior high. But yeah, I went to so many movies. I probably saw, I couldn't tell you how many movies I saw as a kid. Because my, grand, my grandpa would take me, and like I said, Saturday afternoons, they would have a double feature. And it was usually, um, I mean, some of it was, was stuff like, um, uh, I remember seeing, um, Star Chaser, The Legend of Orin, and Space Hunter, Adventures in the Forbidden Zone. That must have hurt. Huh? 
I said, that must have hurt, man, because I saw a space on her. What a piece of crap that was. I I, I legitimately own that on Blu-ray. Cause it's... Oh, man. Do you, do, do you got it in uh, 3D? Um, No, it does not have 3D in it. You can't, okay. Yeah. But yeah, I, I watched that as a double feature in uh as a kid and then like other ones like i remember watching the um um lord of the rings uh and the bashki the and the uh last unicorn on the same day because that was oh, that cool feature. yeah but um and that's what it did saturday afternoons i think it started at like 11 and ran till uh they would start showing the regular movies so my and then my my grandparents would just take me down there and Plop me drop, and, me off. And drop me off and I'd watch movies all day. Fuck yeah, man. That was back when you could do that. You could drop a kid off and get him mm -hmm. out of your hair for a while. That's my mom. Oh, yeah. We'd go to the Del Paso Theater and they'd show, it was an all day thing. Two movies plus all the cartoons and then you sat through all the trailers and shit. You were in there probably six hours. Now it's time to go home and eat and you're done. Oh, yeah. But yeah, double features were awesome. And it, uh, I remember the, the a double feature with Trog and Taste the Blood of Dracula. Now there was a there was a weird double feature. And uh yeah. Okay, okay. I, I, but I, I, I have you beat. Go ahead. I went to the drive-in as a kid. Uh this is I I can't remember, it wasn't wasn't like real young kid, but the two movies double feature was the Jetsons movie and Born on the Fourth of July. <laughs> What? Really? That was a double feature at the drive-in at our local drive-in one 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 week. That might be the greatest double feature ever. Cause you gotta see with the when your parents are looking at you when born on the fourth of July is about a half hour in, they're going, Oh my god. But oh my god, I'm sitting there watching, you know, the Jetsons and and then like okay, and then born on the fourth of July came on and I'm like, who planned this? Yeah, this is yeah, that's this is a joke, right? No, this is this is the oddest double feature I think I've ever seen. Although I probably was I, that oh, a yeah. drive-in? Yeah, it was a drive-in. We yeah, we, see, drive-ins over here too would would team up like a G movie, an R-rated movie. You'd have like two, three movies, and you go, "What the hell, man? This is awesome!" Oh, yeah. I'm twelve years old. I'm seeing all sorts of stuff. I I remember as a kid. I can't remember what the move that the first movie was. But I remember being in the back seat at the drive-in, and Flesh Gordon was the second movie. <laughs> and, and so I want to say the Wall was the first one, or something like that. But my oh, parents, man. my parents didn't didn't like, you know, they just took me figuring I'm asleep in the back, except for I wasn't asleep. I'm just like, <laughs> maybe I don't know. What, what flesh gordon was like late 70s so i was probably like five six years old <laughs> like man yeah, late I, I saw flesh gordon in la when i was uh, on leave uh from ed I, I was i was stationed at edwards so i was like 18 and they were showing it on uh hollywood boulevard at one in one of the theaters i said flesh gordon you know that poster was cool so i want to see this so we go in there and I, oh shit, this is a porn film. <laughs> yeah. I, okay, I'm good. But uh yeah. It it was it was one of the ones that I'll tell you a weird one. Have you ever seen the movie Corruption with Peter Cushing? Corruption. Uh it sounds familiar. Um what's what's the premise? Did you pardon me? What was the premise? I, I it sounds familiar. Yeah, so, his wife is a, a model or actress, and he accidentally knocks one of the modeling lights down on her face because she's kind of like not making out with the male model, but he gets jealous and knocks the light out and it burns her face. And so from then, he's trying to gra uh, do skin grafts to make her look right. But he asked, the, I don't know why he had to take the pituitary gland out but he he's killing women and then uh uh using whatever he took out of them to uh try and make her face better 
And this was a hardcore, brutal film with nudity and he cuts his chick's head off in a train in one part. And my mom's asleep next, because uh, she, she, if we went to the drive and you could, you could bet she was going to sleep. And we, me and my brother and sister are in there going, holy shit, what is this? Does this movie actually scarred my sister, scared the shit out of her for years. I was like, uh, no, no rating, no nothing. I was, uh, this is great. This is the, this is America. Well, what's funny? Um, talk about it. I remember going to the drive-in with my parents and seeing the uh, um, town at Dread. I think it was the drive-in. This, I remember watching it with my parents. The town at Dreaded Sundown. Do you remember that one? Right. About the what the yep. the, the, the the Phantom but, murders in Texarkana. Yeah. And Ben, uh, ben Johnson. Yeah, we uh, were going to Texas to visit family. And yeah, I remember that movie because I think of Charles Pierce. Yeah, Charles Pierce because he, he, it was uh, right after he did uh, Boggy Creek, um, or right around that time. Um, but we were driving through Texarkana on our way to Texas, and of course, my parents looked at me and they go, "Do you remember that movie, Town at Dreaded Sundown?" And I'm like, I don't know, five, six at the time, and I'm like yeah and they're like this is that town and i'm like i i literally <laughs> we're riding in a motor home i'm hiding in the back like on you know where the the little bed thing went and i'm like hiding underneath the blanket like we're gonna get through i don't want to be in the town of dreaded <laughs> like, why would you do That's that funny. to a kid <laughs> and then and then i realized how young my parents were and i was like oh yeah okay they were kids <laughs> so but uh now now oh, I, get, I i take i take my kids to conventions and and uh they they meet some of the horror movie people and i'm like remember that horror movie that's jason or that's the guy who made you know and they're like oh okay in the end of them being scared of anything so <laughs> all right i just lost you Hello? okay i'm back i don't know what happened you there? I, can, I got. I hear you. I hear yeah, you. I don't know what that was. Okay. Yeah, that this completely. So. Uh, yep. uh, okay. Yeah, we saw a bunch of stuff. Yeah, I'm. I'm I've. I, I'm. My wife yelled at me now. She goes. She goes. You know, because my kids are all now adults, except for my my youngest, youngest. And uh, she yells at me. She goes, "You can't just let your kids watch this stuff." I'm like, we did. <laughs> I kind of bitch at Jeff because he lets uh, Aurora watch stuff that probably shouldn't be watching. And uh, but I and then he go then he'll bring it up. Well, you let me watch the Howling when I was a little kid, and I said, Oh yeah, that's right, I did, didn't I? <laughs> well, <laughs> so I can't really say too much. It wasn't that my parents. He, he was a baby, and he's. Yeah, it, like I said, it wasn't that my parents let me watch stuff. Um, it was the fact that, that we had HBO in the early days where at a certain point you got to watch, you know, <laughs> they, they put just whatever on. Am I losing you again? Maybe. Oh, yeah, you watch all sorts of stuff on HBO. Oh, yeah. And uh, what was it? Um, yeah, you just... And then when I got older, my parents separated. So my mom, you know, my dad just let me watch whatever because, you know, he wanted to try to be the cool dad. And then my mom just right. wasn't going to work. So and that was when video stores started being big and video stores didn't care what you rented. As long as you had money to rent it, you rented whatever. I was like, um, I was talking with my kids. I'm like, man, I rented movies that I would never, I wouldn't let you watch today. As adults, I would feel bad at letting you guys watch it. <laughs> oh, yeah, man. There's no way I would have let Jeff watch some of the stuff I saw when I was a kid. I, nope. <laughs> You're nope. not going to watch it. Oh, no way. But uh, Tim would let him watch it. Yeah, it's, 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 it's. He'd go over to my brother's house, man. They, those guys were watching all sorts of shit. And I was like, what the hell did you let him watch? Yeah, well, oh, my, well, my um, my oldest, my my oldest son, 
my, my, my not, not adopted son, my oldest biological son, he would come and um, he would, he would sneak downstairs and he would hide. Damn, somebody's texting me. He'd hide on the steps and watch movies at the top of the steps so he could get away with it. And every so you'd be sitting there watching a the movie and all of a sudden you'd hear him laugh or, or, or giggle and he'd turn around you're like, Brandon, and he'd run upstairs and try to hide that he was upstairs. <laughs> His kids are sneaky. Now, now, oh, my, yeah, man. We... now my youngest, he don't care. He don't care at all. And the, the, the funny thing about it is, is um, my youngest son, he's, he's 10. He has autism. So he gets set in certain things. Um, but one of the right. things, but one of the things is, is like about a year ago, he, well, yeah, yeah, about a year ago, he discovered Halloween and Friday the 13th. And I couldn't hide, it was almost two years ago now, um, I couldn't hide Halloween anywhere in the house. Because he'd find he'd it find and it? watch it. Halloween 1 and 2. <laughs> he wouldn't watch any of the other ones. It was Halloween 1 and 2. And the original. So if he found the remakes or whatever, yeah, he'd go he was... back. So he'd go find one and two. Um, uh, Jason, uh, it had to be the mask. So it had to be three and on. But he would, that kid loved yeah. him. Wasn't scared of it. Wasn't nothing. He just, he thought they were funny. <laughs> <laughs> they I'm are. Like, okay, Vince. <laughs> Right. My, uh, my roommate, when I was working at the base, he, he was a big motherfucker. This guy was huge and strong as hell. But he would get scared like an alien or aliens and stuff. Mm -hmm. Jeff, he's a little baby. He's like three or four. He'd walk up to Rich and go, he'd just shake his head and go, it's not scary. And then walk away. And oh man, it was great. Cause here's this giant guy's his face all red. Like he just been put down. Oh, I go, yep. That's my kid. It, I, it's not scary. I, I, I worked with this guy. This kid was legitimately like six, five. He was a basketball player. So he was, he's tall. Yeah. He's kind of deathly afraid of spiders. Of, of and it didn't oh, matter really? what it was, but I would always sit there and I as I, were, I was a manager at a video store at the time, I would put the movies and stack them over by him like arachnophobia, uh, anything that had a spider on it, <laughs> just and he would freak out. I remember him. He was in the he was because we had a, like we had our our store then we had a little like room where you had your like cleaning supplies and then you had your bathroom well the cleaning supplies room was was always looked kind of dirty and because it was cleaning supplies room and no one ever cleaned that room and so it has spider webs in it right i had to go in there and kill a spider because he had to go to the bathroom and it was only him and i were working and i was like dude i'm not cleaning this up if you piss on the floor i was like i will go kill that spider <laughs> He did not want <laughs> freaked him out freaked him out so bad but yeah he and, and like i said movies you couldn't watch any movies with with spiders in it um like we'd put movies in you know to watch on on all the tvs in the in this in the store and uh you know you get to the ones with like just like the the like um uh indian uh the he's brushing off the yeah yeah and he, he'd almost have a panic attack if he got to that point. And I'm like, okay, we're past that spot. Now you can go back to being normal. But literally. Yeah, close your eyes. Yeah, there close you your go. eyes. Power through. You'll be fine. <laughs> oh, shit. So, but I, I'm, I'm, I, like I said, I'm, I'm a movie nerd. My wife, my wife is a movie nerd, but she isn't to the extent I am. I can legitimately go to like an all-night horror fest and spend 12 hours in a theater and she gets she if she goes to a three-hour movie she's like oh i want to go home so <laughs> oh man 
Yeah, we're moving nerds around here. Oh yeah, yeah. tons, oh. tons and tons and tons of film. Yeah, that, that's that's I got, I got like I don't know like, I think I have like eight thousand DVDs. I have probably about three thousand Blu-rays. I probably still have a thousand VHS. Yeah, you got a lot more than me. And uh, I probably got a thousand. Uh, well. Mostly Blu-rays, but combos. There's some some DVDs in there. But my son, Jesus Christ, man, he has a couple of walls full of of stuff, and it's crap. Like Blood Beast Monster from the Philippines. I go, what the fuck did you go buy that for? Oh, I've never seen it. I go, yeah, you spent twenty bucks on it, and it sucks, dude. Oh, but well yeah. Mine is that since I have a store and DVDs are so cheap now, I sell them for a buck a piece for most part. People bring me in yeah. hundreds at a time. And so I'm like, oh, I don't own this movie and I'll, and I'll throw it in a pile. And so I have movies that, that are horrible, but I have nothing in them. So I might have 20 cents in it. So I'm like, whatever I got. That's, yeah, that's different. Yeah. yeah but, you uh, don't go on Arrow and order... 200 bucks worth of looks like dripping shit i said don't do that dude you're embarrassing me i'm your dad <laughs> what, what one of my good friends looked at me one day and he, he looked at me he goes man he goes you you have so many shitty movies and i was like i know I, and I, I love them i i I, I, I have a, I have an ongoing joke, and it's, it's, it, I guess it isn't really an ongoing joke, but I have an ongoing thing. I can't do I saw the Titan- anymore. I can't do it. <laughs> I own. I've seen Titanic once, and that is three hours of my life I will never get back. But do what I got? Uh, um, I, I always joke around. I was like the movie Titanic. That right. is th- that is three hours of my life I will never get back. I agree with you. Worst but, fucking movie ever to win an Academy oh, Award ever. Horrible. But I've seen Blackula every year at Halloween time since I was in junior high. Blackula's not Blackula's not a piece of shit. That's a great movie. Love that movie. Yeah, it is a great movie, and and the sequel was good. Oh yes, uh, with a uh, yeah, Scream Blackula Scream. Yeah, with uh, Pam Greer. Pam Greer. Yep, yeah, great movie. Oh yeah. Uh, but uh, Blackenstein is not a great movie. No, that's a holy shit movie. Well, what I found out recently that the guy who did uh, Blackula was making a movie that I, I it's it was started but never finished, but it was literally called Black the Ripper, and it was a black exploitation oh, Jack the Ripper movie. I want to see that. It's never been finished. That's the only crap. Wow. It's 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 I think like maybe 20 minutes of it exist. But yeah, it's never been finished. It's called Black the Ripper. Now see how how I'm ta- talking shit about movies and I went, "Oh, I want to see that." Yeah, I want to see that. But oh man, I I've seen I I and then, then on top of it, I I've have seen... it the, the, the thing I have, I had a buddy and he would always get me to watch bad movies and he would always try to con me into movies that I'm like, yeah, I'm never watching that no matter what. You're not going to get me to watch that. You, you couldn't pay me to watch that. <laughs> and like he, he was one of the ones who'd always try to con me into watching The Human Centipede. All those movies. I, oh, those fucking movies are just yeah. the worst. No. I was like, I'll never watch those. I, I, I made a mistake. I, 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 cause I watched that first one. And then I realized what it was, and I never watched another one. And he would always try to con you me. You never. I watched the second one. Never, ever, ever watch that thing. It's disgusting. It's foul. It's fucked up. And the other one he kept trying to get me was the Serbian. But I watched it. Yeah. You ever heard of the one? I saw that too. Maybe I'll... I might be sick. Because I saw a Serbian film, man. That thing was foul. 
Oh, yeah. Yeah. It, it's literally as soon as you told me about it, I looked it up and I read the synopsis. And I went, no, no, you can keep that. I'm, I'm, I, I read the synopsis. I'm good. I am OK. Yeah, that is that is all you actually. The thing that's weird about Serbian film is that it's an extremely well-made movie. It was like in a glass cage. That's a movie you probably don't want to see. But yeah, it, it's it, 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 from what I understand, it is a well, yeah, it's a yeah. well shot, well directed, well acted, well acted. Foul. It's just, it's, but it is foul. Yeah, there's a there's the part that they always talk about that's the most controversial scene, which I found comical. It actually was like. I'm what this is. This is just a is a someone just being a uh, dick or something because it was not disgusting. The the most disgusting part of that movie is the end, not not the scene that I'm trying. To, I'm not going to tell you what the scene is. Oh, I, I it's very controversial. But yeah, at I know the, what the end. Scene is. What happens is fucked up. Yeah, yeah. And uh, have you ever seen Martyrs? Yes. I've seen Martyrs. I've seen both versions. The uh, the 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 uh, foreign, uh, the French, and the American. Did you, you saw the remake and the original? Yeah, yeah. And the fact that it's yeah. made by the same I, guy is beyond me. So, that that's a couple of movies. Funny Games is made by the same guy, but the French version is a thousand times better than uh, the, the American, American version. Yep. Yep. And then Wreck, when they remade Wreck and called it Quarantine, they should have took Quarantine and flushed it down the toilet. Wreck was awesome. Oh, yeah, Wreck's phenomenal. I love that movie. I love that. Uh, Actually, there's a bunch of, or a couple movies from Spain, uh, Day of the Beast and Wreck, and uh, I can't think of the other ones. But those movies are as good as anything the Americans have ever made. Oh, yeah. I, I, I'm, I, I, uh, well, you get, um, uh, Day of the Beast, um, that's the one with, um, oh, man. If, Day of the Beast is the one where the priest has to keep committing sin so he can get closer to Satan because yeah. he knows that Satan yeah. is coming, is going to arrive and he wants to kill Satan, but he yeah. has to get closer and closer yeah. to them. That's a phenomenal movie. Yeah, I, I watched that one not too long ago, but yeah, it was it was uh it's 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 like a super dark comedy horror. Yeah, yeah, it's a comedy. Yeah, you ain't laughing at the end <laughs> when Satan shows up. You're go, oh shit. Uh, Wreck, man, Wreck was awesome. Wreck two was good too. It was the other two I didn't really like, but. Uh, the second one was really good, except for there were a couple shots where I said, no, this guy's supposed to be holding a camera and he's he's going up and down like he's on a crane. I said, ah, no, no. Nope. But besides some stuff like that, that was a great movie, too. Oh, yeah. Well, it's like, um, well, well, Guillermo del Toro, he did those movies over there like uh, Devil's Backbone and Kronos. Oh, yeah, Backbone. Kronos is my... That Kronos to me is his best. Well, I'll go Pan's Labyrinth too, but those are my two favorite movies of his. I love Devil's Backbone, but it didn't really have it. It was almost like a fairy tale. Yeah. And so is Pan's Labyrinth. Yeah, Pan's Labyrinth. But Kronos was an out and out horror film that was awesome. Oh, yeah. The, the end fact- of Kronos reminded me of the end of two. Go ahead. Oh, the fact that, that, that they were trying to make an Americanized version of that is. I was like, no, 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 we don't need an American version of that. That is, that is definitely a movie that no. only exists in that, you know, so. You know, if you got to dub it and, ju- uh, and just show the original dub, I could live with that. I, I don't like dub films mostly, except for uh, Godzilla films, but uh, uh, uh don't remake Kronos. You're no. never going to do it. It just, there was, there was something about that movie that was way past what everybody else was doing. And oh, the yeah. ending is, reminds me of 2001 when he's the, the white vampire thing and it just ends there. I went, fuck, that's how to end a movie. 
Yeah, I, I need to sit back and rewatch. I probably ain't watched that in probably 10 years now. I need to rewatch it. Uh, I need to get the um, Criterion. Do no, I don't. I don't. The I don't criterion. own it. Criterion. Yeah. I yeah, I got to get that Criterion one. I just uh, I was able to pick up some movies that they had a Criterion sale on Amazon about a month ago. And I was able to score a couple of movies I was looking for. And uh, Kronos was not one. Well, it was out. was out of stock when I tried to order that. So I picked up Stalker. I think I was, uh, I was trying to order. Huh? I picked up Stalker and Haxon. So. Oh, you got Haxon. Yeah, I got to get that. Oh, yeah. Um, I must have been trying to get movies at the same, same time. Because I remember I wanted to get Kronos, too. And it was out of stock. Mm -hmm. And I got, I can't even remember what I got. I think I got uh, Repo Man. Uh, there's a couple. I can't remember what I got. They're over there somewhere, but <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. I let, I, <laughs> oh, no. Merry Christmas, Mr. Lawrence was one of them. Yeah. I've, I, I only own, I own several Criterion DVDs, but I only own, I think, like four Criterion Blu-rays. Uh, Stalker, Haxon, Godzilla, and didn't they just? Um, yeah, didn't they just start a couple of years ago? Blu rays, because I know I got a lot of DVDs from them, but I just started getting the Blu rays a couple of years ago. The, uh, well, I I think so, but I think or maybe they were. I don't know. I don't remember seeing Blu rays about five years ago. No, it's got to be longer than that because I've had Godzilla Criterion Blu-ray for quite a while. So I bet you I've had that for about 10 years. So. Because I know I got Onibaba uh, Blu-ray. Uh, yeah, whatever. <laughs> they got Blu-rays now. That's all I know. Yep. I'm uh, I'm always on the lookout for for stuff. I don't want to go into HD 4K or whatever all that fucking shit is. I'm tired of having to. I have I have done every incarnation of the Wild Bunch ever put out, and it's getting old. Uh, mine is uh, the Star Wars, the original trilogy, and Alien got, and Alien. The VHS tape. What'd you go get? Oh my! My phone kept chiming, and uh, oh. I was trying to see what. What the hell was going on with my stupid phone? So, I have I have I have my work phone and my my personal phone. Yeah, I don't even know where my phone is right now. Uh, good, I don't want anybody calling me anyway. Well, it, th that's the worst part about it is is, is uh, if anybody calls me on this one, my my personal phone, I don't answer it because unless the only people that call me are my wife, my kids, and my grandmother. Everybody else texts me. So if it's a phone call, I ignore it because it's not somebody I want to talk to at that point. But this one is... Yeah, the, that's... But, everybody calls me on that If one. I'm, at, I'm at the gym and these idiots are trying to call me and it's going off, going on, you, get, you know exactly where I'm at every day at 2 o'clock. Every day. Yep. I feel well, except for Saturday. So don't bug me. Two to four is my time. I, I, I but now nah, you that's that's the way I am. I get people who will message me, call me, and I, I only I can only get to the gym about three days a week, but I'm there 1130 to 130. And I was like, Exactly. You got your time. Call you. I'm like, holy crap. Like <laughs> I won't answer it. My my granddaughter, well, when she was little, when they got her her phone. That's the only one I will answer. And then it's the same. It's grandpa. What are you doing? What do you think I'm doing? Doing. Yeah. And she goes, oh, okay, I'll call you later. Or call me later. I, okay. That's it. God the, damn. The, the only, the only person I answer the phone for at the gym is my grandmother. That's the only person I will answer the thing. I literally, I did. I'll, 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 I'll let it go to voicemail, but yeah. Yeah, there's nothing I can do in that two hours that is going to help you. When I'm no. done, I can call you, tell me what the hell you need, what what you need. Do I got to go to the store? Do I got to do something? What? But between those two hours, I can't do nothing for you anyway. No, leave me alone. Oh my god, 
that's it it's it's uh i go like i said i go there and it's it's the one thing i want is i i i tell people i was like i don't want to be a jerk just as it is i was like just leave me alone i'm here to work out i get my workout done you can talk to me all you want you can hang it whatever i was like but i i want to get my workout in and sometimes it's, yeah. it's too busy and you're just like and then i really don't want to talk to people I'm maneuvering around. I'm doing stuff I don't want to do first because somebody else is occupying that machine and you just get to it when you can. So, yeah. That, when I'm at the gym, no, don't call me because I'm not going to answer it anyway. I, I'm like you. You can go to voicemail. When I'm done, I hit the voice. I say, hey, Google, voicemail. You got 20 voicemails. Delete, 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 delete. Okay, there you go. I, I had I have one customer and he he doesn't know um boundaries. He he right. I, I tell him I was like, I am open to, I will be there till seven. Saturdays I'm there from one, I'm there till <laughs> eight. Do not call me before two o'clock on the weekdays. Do not call me after seven on the weekdays. Do not call me <laughs> because I'd get, I get he would he would call and text and voicemail me five times and then and if you didn't answer him or didn't go whatever you know I'm busy he would just keep you just see the list of him trying to get a hold of you and you're like ah oh. I'd be like at the gym <laughs> yeah. At the gym, uh, uh, you can call me when I get out. Oh. At the, at the, that can't be that hard. No, but or you would think. Yeah, there, there, there's a couple people who 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 never get that whole. Well, where are you at? The same place I am every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. I am right at the every gym. time. Yep. Unless I'm in vacation and I'm out of the country or I'm out of the state. I'm there. That's uh, it. I, I went on vacation and I'm still using the gym at the hotel. It's a shitty little gym. Right. But I was still using the gym at the hotel at the same times I would if I was here at home. So same thing. If yeah. I was in, I was just in Seattle at my son's house and he in the garage is the gym. Mm -hmm. Two o'clock. I'm in that gym. I'm in the garage. Don't call me. Get the fuck out of here, because I start getting a little irritated. I got okay. my my ex. She'll she'll call. She'll go. What are you doing? Go, what the? I want to say. What the fuck do you think I'm doing? But I don't. I go ah, working out. I'll call you when I'm done. Click. Oh yeah. Every time too. What are you doing? Shut up. What was a uh, um, not la not this. I think last Sunday. Uh, I was helping my grandmother move because they, they, my parents called my mom and stepdad called me up. They're like, you want to help us move your grandmother? I'm like, well, I was on my way to the gym, but yeah, I'll help grandma move. <laughs> so I helped Marimo move, got a bunch of stuff done. I come home and I'm sitting there kind of antsy. And my wife looks at me and goes, you want to go to the gym? Yes, I will be back in a couple hours. I will talk to you in a few. <laughs> yeah. So I, I hate do. messing my gym time. Oh, man. Well, you are. You're stepping into the wrong house if I missed Jim. It's like today. That's one of the things that, that throws me because I do I if I do a Sunday comic show, it, yeah, it interferes with my gym time. And so if I'm not completely worn out from doing the show, I go to the gym after the show. Um, but I, I gotta get that exercise in, you know, and you think lugging boxes around and setting shit up would be more than enough exercise but no i gotta get my cardio no, in. i gotta get my it's not the same thing no but I mean, uh I... oh it was funny because today was the first day i saw some of these people in almost over a year at the show and uh over a year a little over a year ago uh, i went into the doctor and everything i was like um I was like 221. Yeah. And um, I, I work out, but I my diet was garbage. Right. 
So I changed my diet and I did, I started doing different exercises. And uh, all of a sudden I go, hey, skinny. And I turn around, I was like, it's people I hadn't seen because they, they hadn't seen me since I dropped. I, I dropped like 30 pounds since last year. And I was like, hey, and they're like, holy crap, what happened to you? I was like, I'm working out hard, man. I, like, <laughs> I changed my diet. 30 pounds, hell yeah. Yeah. You know, I that's dropped- the hardest thing to do was changing my diet. That was the hardest thing to do. Oh, yeah. I ate shit, man. Especially when I was powerlifting. I ate all sorts of dog shit, but I was stronger in hell. And then when I got hurt and I, I changed up my, uh, my, work, my routine, then I started actually watching what I was eating. And at, I lost 105 pounds. But uh, yeah, it was, it was weird when I changed up because I'm going, man, that hamburger looks fucking good, but I better eat this. Well, mine is that I, I legitimately, I ate lots of bread. And when I stopped eating lots of bread, <sighs> dropped that weight off, I, I drink. I don't drink anything, but mostly um, tea and uh, these things I found because they're like uh, by boost. They're uh, I don't, I've never seen that. Yeah, they, um, they just started carrying them. I, I had to go to Sam's Club to get a case of them. And um, our local Kroger's, which I don't know if you guys have Kroger's out there, but it's a uh, um, just a grocery store. They started carrying them. It's a um, right. It's a, a, a essentially a plant based like energy drink, and they're ten calories. And there's like no. Low oh, calories. all right. Yeah, yeah. So I, I drink these and tea, and tea has no calories. So yeah, I drink a lot of tea. And, uh, but yeah, when I when I cut bread out, it wasn't. I cut most bread out. I still I'll still have a little bit, but I cut when I quit drinking beer. That was that lots of weight fell off. Uh, I mean, a lot. Well, at, at my heaviest, I drank pop and drink beer and I ate bread. And then, but I wasn't going to the gym that much. So I stopped drinking pop. I dropped a ton of weight. Then I started working out a lot. And then I started gaining weight. Yeah, muscle weight. Yeah. And, but then I was still eating kind of garbage. And, I wasn't, I wasn't losing the gut. So I still got a little bit of a gut, but I don't have much of one now. And, um, (laughs) one day my wife goes, you know, just, just cut back on what you eat. Don't, don't eat. Cause I'd eat sandwiches for lunch or like toast for breakfast and stuff like that. And I cut that back and I don't cut, I'm not completely breadless, but you know, I, if I make like a, um, a hamburger sometimes around the house, I'll eat like one with a bun and then one just, you know, just a burger. So I, you know, instead of having two hamburgers, I just eat one hamburger with a bun, one hamburger without stuff like that. So cuts it way back. Yeah. But I'm, I'm, I'll, I'll eat uh, hamburgers. I, I'm not going to eat a hamburger wrapped in la- lettuce. I just won't no. eat it. So no. I'll, I need a, I'll have a hamburger and a bun. Or a hot dog in a bun. I don't eat much red meat anymore, so that's very rare when I do that. But you know, a couple every couple of months, I go, "Ah, oh, shit, man, I want a hamburger." But usually, I'm chicken, chicken and fish. I cook now. I cook for myself now. I didn't used to. I used to always go out to eat, and uh, so that kind of, that helped a lot. Oh yeah, it's eat, eat. my wife's a is a really good cook, and she worked at a at a high end restaurant for years. And uh, I've cut way back on my red meat. Uh, I'm a lot, of, a lot of chicken, a lot of chicken. Yeah, a lot uh, of chicken. Chicken, pork. Um, I she just got me because I was never a big. F- I, I liked salmon. That was about it. Um, but yeah. then she, she introduced me to like good tuna, and you know, because all I had yeah. ever had before was like cans, <laughs> and she's like, "That's garbage. Here, have this." Because uh, we were at a restaurant when I was like, that doesn't look like tuna. It looked like a steak. And yeah. um, there's a big ahi tuna steak. And uh, I was like, let me try some. And I ate it and I love it. And uh, except for I love it probably a little too much because I can sit there and just eat it and eat it and eat it and eat it. And eat it. 
because unfortunately, uh, uh, Tuna never seems to fill me up. And I it, don't yeah, well, salmon doesn't fill me up, but I, I stick to my portion. Yeah. I'll do my portion. Control your hand, your palm of your hand. That should be the size of your meat. Mm -hmm. uh, then I'll have like a baked potato or half a baked potato. I won't have a whole one. I'll cut it in half. And then whatever vegetable I'm having, that works pretty good. I'm, I'm fairly full till the next meal. But I, I, I still kind of count down to my next meal because I didn't used to do that. I used to eat like a pig and I was full all fucking day off this stuff. Well, now, no. My problem is now is, is that I, I eat um, oatmeal with a little bit of dry cereal in it just to, you know for filler and then i don't eat again till like eight o'clock at night because my schedule i i'm i'm horrible and then i'm starved by the time i get eight o'clock at night hits and then i want to eat everything unfortunately because my... i'm starved when i just before i go to sleep i that's when i really get hungry so I, I i'll eat oatmeal and then i'll throw in like a couple of uh tablespoons of peanut butter into it like a, and mix it up and shit that that actually fills me up pretty good i can sleep through that and i'm not waking up my stomach is screaming at me one one, one of my problems was was up until relatively recently i worked third shift so i was really hungry in the middle of the night because that's when i'd eat lunch yeah and i had to it took me forever to get away from that because I would be hungry real late at night. And now I don't, I 10 o'clock, I will not eat anything after 10 o'clock at night. Um, That's a good time. Yeah. And uh, everybody goes, Oh, it's supposed to be eight o'clock at night. I'm like, I don't, <laughs> I get up at, at nine, eight 30, nine o'clock in the morning. I go to bed about two o'clock in the morning, 10 o'clock yeah. is, is equivalent to your eight o'clock. So, <laughs> but no, yeah, don't tell me how to eat. Oh yeah. No, it's, it's, it's funny. I, I, I'm, I just turned 47. Uh, I'm probably in maybe not the best shape of my life because there was a time um, when I was in my early twenties where I legitimately worked out constantly every day. Yeah. And um, you know, but I still ate garbage. And I drank all day. So now I eat better. I don't drink. I don't, smoke i don't you know i don't drink pop i don't I, I drink tea or like you know i even cut back on like juice because juice is full of sugar and right. now i'm like i feel good and I, I it's weird being you know i figured by the time i was getting this age i'd start feeling like shit and now i feel good pretty much every day so that's good yeah i just turned 66 and i feel pretty good still uh but you're right i was uh back when i was like 28 was probably the best shape i was ever in uh but i'm still in okay shape yeah, i get to the gym that's all i say yeah it's it's i do my shit leave me my, alone my problem is is that i can i can hear my i can hear my shoulder right now because i screwed it See up that? yeah that's right here man and it popped all the time like it depends that's why i use uh, dumbbells now i don't do a flat bench because flat bench you're stuck in a certain position mm -hmm. this thing pops like a like it's a <laughs> like a popcorn machine but if i do dumbbells then i can adjust it where i don't feel it that much anyway well i i went from the flat bench to the the seated uh um bench uh machine yeah the machine yeah do. And that works great because I can kind of like adjust so I can, I can move the, 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 the bars here, 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 you know, up, down, I can move my seat. And so I can get like really need. And uh, the only other part is, is that I have um, these two fingers are numb. I have nerve damage in my, in my, in my arm. And so working out, I, I can't hold like um, I used to do like just weights and if you're, my hand will go numb and I'll drop shit. So that, that sucks. So I, I tend to use a lot more machines than I do dumbbells at this point because of that. So. But. I've never had, people always talk bad about machines. I, I, I've never had any problems with machines or cables. 
No, it's the I, same goddamn. It's the same thing. You're using the same muscles. I don't know what they're talking about. The only thing is you don't use your stabilizer muscles when you're using a machine. But like you said, you can adjust it. Mm -hmm. And oh, it's yeah. the same thing. People are just are weird. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I know people who are like, oh, the machine. I, I only go to gyms that they have dumbbell uh, barbells and stuff like that. I'm like, it's the same thing. I'm, I'm doing the it's exact same thing you are just probably safer I, you know yeah yeah and you know i don't have to worry about because the machine's not going to like you know i'm not going to drop it because it's only going to go back so far because the machine's going to stop it i've so, seen people drop uh uh people bench pressing and lose it and drop that fucker right on their chest i was like oh yeah that's not good i've watched a guy you drop need a spotter his... or you need to quit doing it i watched a guy drop one on his neck he was sitting there just. I've seen that. Guy and he, dropped you it see his arm start back. doing that, and then came, and and everybody ran over and grabbed it because he was doing it. No spotter. We grabbed it, pulled it off of him, and he went to the doctor. Yeah. Yep. Dumb shit. I, I saw a guy bust his bust his clavicle when he dropped it, and you're like, you don't want to say anything, but you're thinking you're a dumb. <laughs> Bitch, man, come on, man. I, I, I like, like I said, I like the gym. I like the machines, stuff like that. I've only, the only bad thing I've seen so far is um, two people on a treadmill and one guy on the uh, seated uh, uh, leg press. Yeah. Um, the two people both face planted on the uh, uh on the treadmill they were going treadmill. faster than they could be and then smack and they went down um the all of a sudden we're sitting there and um uh, where the seated machine is i was like two machines down so i could kind of see the machine out of the corner of my eye and this girl's leg pressing well more than she should have and you heard the pop and then you heard this crying and you heard the clamp because it came back, but it's got the brakes on it to keep you from like, right. you know, really. and the, everybody ran over there and got her and we're like sitting there watching and pretty soon the ambulance shows up and they get her out of there. But yeah, I don't know exactly what happened, but her knee went out. It was, you just heard the pop and then next thing you heard the scream. So it was bad. I've heard, I saw a girl. Yeah, she was doing supersets on a on a on that laid laid back leg press, mm -hmm. and her her muscles she didn't break a leg or anything, but her muscles must have just gone out because it came down, and she didn't have the clamps on. Mm -hmm. So she's stuck like this with her knees are popping in her face, and we're just looking at her going pull that shit up. You got to use these clamps, honey. You you're gonna get yourself killed. Oh, yeah. she's like all embarrassed of course but it was that was pretty funny oh yeah i'm glad she didn't get hurt yeah it's like I, I've, I've seen that one and i i don't know but the, i'm not gonna lie watching people face plant on a treadmill at full speed is hilarious oh That's, yeah man i would have a hard time not just oh, laughing my ass off you're just like you you, just, you almost like completely kind of cover your face because you're, you're you're wanting to laugh um, yeah, you want to laugh. The the other one was um, I'm on the uh, exercise bike, you know, here, and the guy like right behind me, so we're like kind of like at a slight angle, is on the treadmill, and I can hear him, and I can watch him. He keeps doing this weird run, and I'm sitting, and all of a sudden, man, he just he, you can tell he's going way too fast to what he can actually do. And he starts to stumble and he stumbles a little bit more. And instead of pulling the key <laughs> thing out, he, right. he doesn't hit stop. He keeps trying to, trying to catch himself. And the next thing you know, I see this, the head go down and I hear him, bam, and he slides off the back. Because, yeah, that brake hits when the thing pulls out, but not that fast. <laughs> 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 but he did. He's, he's just here and down, like instantaneous. 
Um, and then the other one was, uh, I was on there almost the exact same place. Um, and there's a girl running behind me and I hear the, oh, and I'm like, uh Oh, and I just hear the vomit because she's pushing herself and it went everywhere. Oh man. And I'm like, Oh, and it stunk and it was horrible. And it was literally like, and this is back when I used to go at night. So this is one o'clock in the morning. Yeah. There's one person working. So this one poor little girl has to go back there and clean up the vomit. Clean it all up. Oh, it was horrible. Yeah. But I don't know. It's, 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 I, 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 I saw a guy shit himself once oof. at uh, the 24 hour. Said, oh yeah, that, that, you know, you probably should hit the restroom before you come in here. Oh yeah. Oh um, yeah. Well, that was a, that was not at oh. night. That was in the that was in the daytime, and these guys were furious. <laughs> they had to clean that shit up. <laughs> well, uh, it's funny because uh, um, I'm sitting here talking to the, the the one girl who used to work there, and she's telling me all the this nastiness that goes on at the gym. And she goes the other day, and this this has been a while back. She don't even work there anymore. She's like, oh, she goes somebody shit in the shower, and then tried to stomp it down the drain. And I'm like, oh, Jesus Christ. Oh, my God. What the hell? What, what kind of animals <laughs> work out there? Jeez, come on, people. And um, I, I felt bad today. I'm literally on the uh, um, uh, crunch machine. So I'm doing my crunches. And uh, fart slipped out. Yeah, but was- you know, I got my headphones in. And I'm like. In my head, it was really loud. So I stop and I look around at everybody and I'm like, did, some, did anybody hear me? And I look over and I feel like everybody's watching me, but I'm looking and they've all got their earbuds in too. And I'm like, there's no way you heard me <laughs> all the way over here. <laughs> but I did. I felt I felt horrible because it was it, it 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 in my head it was it was super loud, but I didn't know how loud it was because I said I had my earbuds in, but I, I'm like do don't, don't, don't pay attention uh it, it was bad today so but i, I got my workout in and uh, headed down the went to i got mine in on sunday i gotta go tomorrow i got like i said i gotta change this routine though i'm tired of six days a week i want to get to four so i gotta combine stuff my goal is to get to four days a week I would like to do uh, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Sunday, right. or something like that. Oh, really? Yeah, I'd like, or maybe uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Sunday. Um, I, I I don't know how I'm going to do it, but I would like to add another day. Um, yeah. I, I wanted to get back because I used to do martial arts when I was young, and I was wanting to do that again and make add that, but there's no place around here. And then I talked to a friend of mine today and he was trying to get me to go about a half hour away or more to go to his dojo. And, but they do it legitimately six days a week. And I'm like seven 30 to nine. And my wife looked at me and goes, no, she goes, I would never see you. You get off work at seven, you come home and you spend time with me. That's fine. She goes, if you could go do it during the day while I'm at work, no problem. But nobody has, you know, a place open during the day like that. So I'm just going to the gym now. So, yep. They got any martial arts classes at your gym? Because we do. No. no, they don't have any there. They're they're legit. Like the only places around here that have martial arts classes, um, are just the ones that are all. Uh, they're basically for kids. But they say that oh, we have right. 15. And I'm like, yeah, I'm I'm not. I don't want to compete with 13 year olds. Okay. I, I'm sorry. Yeah, I, don't I don't want no 13 year old kicking my ass. I'm just in there to, to, uh, work out. Yeah. See that's, I, I want to do martial arts again for the simple fact is, is that I would like to get more limber. Right. That's and, exactly right. Yeah. And I don't have that anymore. I mean, I'm, I'm stiff and stuff like that. And I do, I do when I work out, I do feel better, but when I did martial arts, man, I could, I could, I could literally kick over my head. I can't kick up to like here now. 
So I would like to be able to get that limber again and stuff. But I don't know if, if I have the time. So I got I got to do it. Oh, well, got to figure it out. <laughs> yep, exactly. But I got to make the wife happy first. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. Yep. You, you don't you don't got any uh, uh, decision in that. No, I, 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 I've 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 been lucky enough. Uh, my wife puts up with my shit and yeah. she's put up with my shit for a very long time at this point. And she is a, uh, I, I, I love her to death and she is, she is a saint because I, I couldn't put up with me for as long. Oh no, that's what I always said. I, I don't know how the hell you do it. Oh no. I, I, the only person that put up with me was my mom. And that's because she had a belt that had this brass thing on the end. So yeah. yeah, that's the only reason why. She yep. could beat the shit out of you with that thing. Oh man, but it it, it it's funny now because it's I, I was I was a I was a garbage boyfriend and a, a shitty husband in my early years because me and my wife have been together. I was nineteen and she was sixteen when we met, and I just turned forty seven. Yeah. So. We we've we've been through we grew up together and I went through all the bullshit kid stuff and and whatnot and the fact that she is still there for me and I I, I tell everybody it's like how do you they go how do you know your wife loves you I was like because no way she would stay if she didn't <laughs> I was like I, I don't have money I don't have looks I don't have <laughs> You're fucking that's thirty something years what do you mean what I, I just look at the person and go, who do you know that's been together that long? No. I can't think of anybody. And the funny part about it, my mom and stepdad have technically only been together slightly longer than me and my wife. Because I met my wife. Okay, at, yeah. Like, yeah, I met my wife at 19 and my, my mom met my stepdad at, when I was 14. So there's only, <laughs> they've only been together five years longer than I've been with my wife. Mm. And, uh, I got, I got, I got a great wife. I got four great kids. Um, and you know, I, I couldn't be happier at this point. It's, it's nice being able to be that way, yeah. but, but you know, it's funny. Cause, um, I've got to the point in my life where I have one child child and I have three adult children. Now my, um, middle boys are buying their first, my, my, they're moving out. My son bought a house and him and his brother are moving out soon. I had a son that went into the Navy. He's back home already. He's doing great. He's, he does, he's a, uh, works, uh, uh, in a, he's a contractor for the military now through some company. And I, I, it, it's weird being that way now. I, I kind of went through a lot of shit growing up and a lot of well, shit when we were younger and um, I have fun now. <laughs> yeah, there you go. That's one of the way I feel. Yeah, there was some wild ass times when I was growing up. For most of my friends probably don't think I was, should be alive by now. No. But uh, but now I'm I'm relaxed. I don't know how why, but I just relax. I do my shit, color the books, and that's it. I don't hardly ever leave my house, or if I do, it's with it would go to the gym go to the store. That's it. I don't need to, I don't want to see anybody go away. Leave me alone. I'm, so. uh, it's funny. Cause I ran into a guy I used to hang out with years ago and he's like, Oh, you know, do you want to go out? And I was like, no, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't go out no more. I don't, I don't drink. You know, I was like, I'll go to a, I'll go to a, a bar or a club if there's a really good band playing or something like that. And I was like, I don't have to go out drinking yeah. about partying. I'm like, I don't like, I like being the, 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 the stay at home dad that, that, well, not stay at home dad. I like being the kind of mellow guy that just, you know, I don't need that no more. It's nice. Hey, I don't, I don't mind being a designated driver. If you nope. guys want, if they want to go, I'll go, I'll drive you around. We'll shoot some pool at about, about 12. I'm going home. And if you don't want to go home, you better find a way to get home because I'm going. 
like I, like I said, about the only reason I'm at a bar is is if either a, a they got good food or there's a good band playing. That's pretty much it. It's like there's no reason for me to be at any of those places outside that. So nope, nope. Right. Oh man, so that's getting late um on my end um i'm going to let you go tonight yes sir i I appreciate it i very very much appreciate this like i said um you are an idol to me and 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 have been since i was a kid and i loved your artwork you know i i follow you on facebook and and i watch you go out and you're out there busting your butt working out you're you're you know you're uh, you know you're kicking butt with your kids and your grandkids and that's awesome I, that's the way i want to be when i get older <laughs> so Wait till I, you get grandkids man everybody else can go f- take a flying fuck because my grandkid and my granddaughter is it oh <laughs> uh, well I have I have such a big difference between my I got eleven years between my uh, youngest and my next youngest, and my wife keeps wanting to have grandkids, but I'm like I got my my son Vince, and that kid I love him to death. He's my he's my he's my world. He's with me probably more than anybody else. Yeah. So he's he's my. I, I I don't care what people say. I'm like, oh, this is my kid. I I he's he has he's 10, but he's 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 super smart. He's he he retains everything. But the only problem is, is that he's probably maturity-wise, he's like five or six. Yeah. And people are like, why is he such why is he watching? I'm like, I don't care. He, he, he can enjoy whatever the hell he wants to enjoy. That's my exactly. buddy. That's your buddy. Yeah, that's your that's my buddy. Yeah, and he, <laughs> and uh, cause he, he yep. that still loves curious George and Paul patrol and blues clues. And I'm like, I don't care. He loves it. Have at it. He can he love can watch it. it. Yep. So yep. I had to, I had to sit through, uh, yo, gaba, gaba. And I I knew every goddamn Yo Gaba Gaba character and how the song and everything. And she go, Grandpa, who's that? Oh, that's uh, whatever that guy's name was. I can't remember anymore. And she she would run these at me like it was a test. He 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 loved. He used to love Yo Gaba Gaba. He kind of grew out of that. But now his whole thing is is that he comes up to me, and he drags notebooks around, and he's like. He's like, he'll draw a, a, a lamp. And he goes, now you draw a lamp. So I have to draw a lamp. And he'll come up to me and he goes, okay, uh, I draw an apple. You draw an apple. So I have to draw an apple. And he, we do that for, like, I did that up until he finally just went to bed. So, but that's his test. I have to do what he wants me to do. And uh, and you do it. Oh, yeah. I, I do oh, what yeah. that kid wants me to do. But we, we will yeah. put heads, though. Because that kid wants to do stuff, and I'm like, bud, no, no. It, it, especially if he gets stuck in a loop. I'm like, come on, come on, we can't, nope, nope, nope. He he loves um, watching stupid shit on YouTube. And I have to get him to stop watching, because there's a lot of stuff on there that he really shouldn't be watching. But it's still, like, people will will put shady shit into, like, kid stuff. So I have to get him out of watching that and i'm like just watch it on regular tv don't watch it on or watch it on streaming or whatever just stop watching the youtube and he'll go okay and he'll be watching it next thing i know i'll go up to go to the bathroom and i'll come back downstairs and he'll be like oh and he'll hurry up and try to turn it back and i'm like come on vince knock it off go back (laughs) yep yeah they got some weird shit on youtube supposedly for kids oh yeah like no no Aurora's all into anime now, so they got weird shit on with anime on there. I got you can't watch those. Nope. 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 Uh, <laughs> man, his 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 whole thing now is is that he uh he he loves a couple video games, and he will watch walkthroughs on YouTube. And I'm like, 
I don't want to watch that. Turn it, bud. Come on, let's find something else. Let's watch actual shows. Come on. But, but uh, all right, man. I I, I definitely got to get going here. Um, and I don't want to keep you all uh busy all night. And I'll let you get back to your day. Uh, I'm gonna go work. Going so on. I will. Take care, sir. And I hope to talk to you again because I had fun. I hope you did. I appreciate it. Yep, you. I had fun. So, and I will say All good right, night. Thank you. Thank you, man. Good Take night. Care. Okay, bye. Bye. I know what you're doing. I'm playing Rock and Chase, a video game cartridge you have to buy separately to play on the Intellivision video game system. Why are you talking like that? They always do. Then they say your parents have to hook it up to the TV. After that, you can start to pick up gold. Trouble is, the police are coming, so you have to keep both eyes on the game. Do they say that too? Funny. Intellivision Master Component from Mattel Electronics. Lock and Chase video game cartridge sold separately. Now what do I do? Okay, this is Advanced Dungeons and Dragons. Video game cartridge. You have to buy it separately to play on the Intellivision video game system. Mom and Dad have to hook it up to the TV. What next? You're trying to find a crown, but it's real easy to get lost. So don't be surprised if the dragon finds you first. Holy cats, you just killed the dragon. I'm sorry, I didn't mean it. Advanced Dungeons and Dragons video game cartridge and Intellivision Master Component from Mattel Electronics, each sold separately. Ghostbusters! Spangler, this lab is spooky. Bankman, if ahead. Ah! There's full speed ahead! What an eyeful! Let's split! Great car! Yikes! It's Water. Highway Hunter! Ah! A real Ghostbusters, each sold separately. Ghostbusters! Careful, Janine, this airport's haunted! Ooh. Wow, great plane! It's air sickness! Run for it! Ooh. Hey, mister, Ooh. how about a lift? This wicked ruin! A real Ghostbusters, each sold separately. All right. I want to thank everybody for watching this week's episode of the Group Therapy Podcast. Remember, follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Um, if you like, you can please like and subscribe. Um, we greatly appreciate everybody watching this. And as always, you can watch our uh, Saturday Morning Serial show. Or if you watch Saturday Morning Serials, you can watch this show. So I appreciate you guys. I will talk to you guys later and have a good night.